There's no doubt that a good wine class can change your entire experience when it comes to wine, but how much do you need to spend? I don't think that you need a different wine glass for every type of wine. In fact, I use a lot of glasses on both whites and reds. I'm looking forward to this taste test. We have eight different glasses here. Everything from this nice inexpensive wine glass, it's about $9.99, all the way up to Gabriel Gold and Zalto glasses that run 80, 90 bucks a glass. There is no perfect one size all wine glass because you have different needs, you're having different types of wines, everybody's taste, everybody's palate's a little bit different. All of these glasses are the ones that I use. I've bought all these glasses with my own money with the exception of the Gabriel glass, which I have both the standard edition and the hand-blown gold edition. However, these were sent to me as samples back in 2018. There's a lot of talk about the thinness of the glass, the size of the bowl, the angle of the glass, so it changes how the wine hits your palate. But for me, it's really about how you feel. If you find the right glass for your palate, it really adds to the experience. Quick overview on the glasses. This is something that you'll find in everyday house. I don't even know where to get it. I just found this in my house. This is the kind of stuff that sometimes people are drinking out of. Also inexpensive glass that I got from Amazon. From 2015 to 2022, I was traveling around the wine world. I didn't have a home. When I came back to the United States, this is one of the first purchases that I made because this glass comes in at, I think, five to eight bucks a glass. I don't even remember the name brand of it. We also have the Rovsia Burgundy glass. I pushed this glass on some of my videos. This is the best inexpensive glass I feel like I've ever used ranges anywhere from nine to 19 bucks, depending on how many you buy. If you buy a set of four, I think on Amazon right now, I saw they were $9.99. Supposed to be hand blown. It feels really nice in the hands. A lot of people have bought them, commented, and said that they like them. This has a huge bowl, fits 28 ounces of wine. That's almost a full bottle. One full bottle is 25.4 ounces. Weighs about 150 grams, so 0.33 pounds. Then we have the Rito 002 red wine glass. This is the heaviest glass in the set. About 180 grams comes in at about 0.4 pounds. It's big, holds 23 and a half ounces of wine, so almost a full bottle. However, it just wields nice. Even though it's heavier, I feel like it's sturdy. And when I play with wine in this glass, it just it reminds me of that scene in the original Star Wars. An elegant weapon for a more civilized age. If you buy a set of four of these, they're about $16, $17 a glass. So pretty affordable and it's durable. This glass, I actually bought at a wine show in Belgrade, Serbia. What happens at these big tastings, you usually put in deposit for a glass and then you can return the glass and get your deposit back. But it was like five bucks and I liked the glass so much that I went on two separate days and bought two of them. And then I actually put them in my carry-on luggage when I flew back to the US. That's, you know, us wine people are weird. It's just, I like the glass. I felt like it performed well with both white and red wines and I can use it on video so why not? Next we have what is quickly becoming my favorite wine glass. We have the Rito Pinot Noir Performance Glass. It holds 30 ounces of wine, so more than a bottle. I bought this as a Christmas present to myself. Comes in at about $45 a glass, so it's not cheap. One thing that I really like about this glass is it has a really wide base. I think that's really important because wine glasses are easy to tip over. I don't know why wine glasses just don't have a wider base. It has these unique striations in the glass. Rito claims that it increases surface area. It allows the wine to taste better. I couldn't find the actual weight of this glass on the internet, but it weighs about as much as the Gabriel glass, which is coming up next. So that puts it at about 150 grams, 0.33 pounds. It's not as light as the Zalto of the Gabriel glass gold, which we'll talk about later. However, it's bigger. It's a bigger glass, so it's got to weigh a little bit more. It is thin. It feels extremely elegant in the hands. I love swirling wine. This is just an amazing glass and it works well with not only Pinot Noir, just all types of wines. I love drinking white wines out of this glass too. Next up, we have the Gabriel Glass Standard Edition. This is machine blown, comes in at 150 grams. So we're talking about 0.33 pounds. Like I said, it weighs about as much as the Rito. The Gabriel Glass are the only ones that are samples, although I'm not in contact with them. They don't, they don't even know that I'm doing this video. I reached out to them to get samples of these glasses because I absolutely love them. This, until I started using the Pinot Noir Performance was the best all-around glass for me. It was sturdy. The stem is a little bit thicker. I wish the base was a little bit bigger, but it works well for all types of wines except Pinot Noir. This comes in at about $35 a glass. 
Then you have its more expensive sibling, the Gabriel Glass Gold. This is a hand-blown glass. This is the lightest glass I think I've ever used. Since it's hand-blown, there's variability in weights. Gabriel Glass has anywhere from 80 to 105 grams, although they say on average it's 90 grams. It's like 0.19 pounds. The stem is significantly thinner than the Gabriel Glass regular. I love these glasses. I don't use them as often as I'd like to because they just feel so elegant. I feel like I'm gonna break them. Here's a sad fact. I had six of these glasses and one of my family members accidentally threw away a two pack because they're so light they, they thought the box was empty, which made me a little bit sad. The Gabriel Glass Gold Edition is often sold out. It's the most expensive glass here. Comes in at 90 bucks a glass. Both of the Gabriel glasses hold 16 ounces of wine. We have its competitor, a glass that a lot of people at a restaurants love. This is the Zalto Universal Glass at 110 grams, so about 0.2 pounds. This comes in at 80 bucks. The Zalto holds 17.9 ounces of wine. It's a universal glass, but it's a little bit taller than the Gabriel glass, so I feel like it's more like a white wine shape. What I do love about the Zalto, it's got a super wide base, a lot wider than the Gabriel glass, which makes it feel sturdy. It's real thin, so you can kind of bend it. I actually was showing one of my wine writing friends this in Europe one time, and he was bending it in a restaurant, and he broke it. The server wasn't super happy about that. We're gonna taste both a high-end white and a high-end red wine in these glasses and see how they perform. Let's start out with white first. I have the Recanati Special Reserve White 2018. This is from Israel. Blend of Roussan and Marsan, both Rhone grapes. 80% Roussan, 20% Marsan. Barrel fermented. I love these Rhone grapes. One of the greatest white wines, in my opinion, is the Chateau de Bocastel Roussan Vieille Vigne. Roussan can act like Chardonnay, maybe a little bit less fruity, a little bit more minerally. I have not had this wine before. I've had their Special Reserve Red, which I think is outstanding, so let's check it out. The Eastern Mediterranean regions like Lebanon, Israel, Syria have a long history of wine production, although they're not really well known. You get a lot of international grape varieties, but I think Rhone grapes do very well there, like this Carignan Grenache. This is a premium wine, barrel fermented, costs around 50 bucks in the USA. To make this a fair test, I'm gonna measure out and put 80 milliliters in each wine glass. That's one third of a cup. Usually a tasting pour is about 50 milliliters in a nice restaurant, 100 to 150 milliliters is usually the amount you'll get in a house pour. A lot of casual drinkers, when they go out to restaurants or when they're having guests serve them, they want bigger pours. However, to get the most of the wine's aromatics, you don't fill it all the way up so you can swirl it in the glass. We've all had friends that we've drank with that try to fill the glass really full. I love the Greek mathematician Pythagoras invented a wine glass back in the day, so if people filled the wine too much, there was a little hole in the middle and the wine would all spill out. I think that's hilarious. They should make a modern glass like this. Let's start out with this crappy glass. It's basically gonna be free, you're gonna find. If you're having an expensive wine, you want a better glass. You don't have to spend a ton, but you want a better glass. This, I mean, I smell a little bit of lemon and lilac. It just kind of smells like a generic white wine. The bowl isn't big enough, so the flavors are muted. I don't smell them, they're not as intense. Let's go up with this other glass that I got from Amazon, which I think is a decent glass. What I hate about it though is the base is really little and the top isn't really big and it just feels a little bit clumsy when you swirl it, but let's see how it smells. Wow, it's so funny. In this glass, I smell more of the wood and just mineral components, almost like slate. I don't get fruit as much. I can tell it smells like a high quality wine, but it's not showing its best. Okay, these are like the basic glasses people use. Let's step up to the wine glasses I actually use. Now, in the rough seat, it shows a lot better. More explosive and everything comes together. It's not only the wood, but as you get lemon, white peach, mineral type flavors. It's a lot better than the first two, but I have to say, it's still not showing its all-out best. Let's move to the Riedel 002. Wow. In the Riedel 002, I don't get as many of the minerals. I don't get as many of the flinty notes or the, or the mineral notes. I get more lemon. Lemon and guava. Maybe a little bit of chalk comes out. I kind of want the combination between the aromas of the Riedel 002 and the Rosia. Let's go to my Pinot Noir performance glass. I'm excited. These are where we start to get more serious glasses. In this one, I get a little more wood, but I get a little bit of caramel notes. This smells 
the best. It's not as explosive. It's so funny because I haven't got the aromas yet that I really, really, really want in terms of glasses. It still smells good. I, I get a little bit of butterscotch in that, which I like, along with some of the other flavors. But here, the butterscotch caramel comes out. Let's go on to the Gabriel Glass Regular. Wow. For me, the nose on the Gabriel Glass Regular is the best so far. It's not too oaky. It's not too mineral. It's not too fruity. You have some of the cream notes as well, as well as the touch of the butterscotch. This... This smells awesome. It smells like a room light. Let's compare that to the Gabriel Glass Gold. Now I pick up the Gabriel Glass Gold, I already feel a little bit better. It's so much more elegant in the hands. Again, tasting's all about your neurology, so maybe it would smell better just because I picked it up and it, it just looks better. It actually smells exactly the same. It smells exactly the same as the Gabriel Glass Gold. Maybe on the palate it'll be a little different because the glass is thinner. A lot of wine glass brands talk about the angle of the glass and how the aromas hit the nose and the palate. Funny that they smell exactly the same. Let's move on to the Zalto. I'm a Gabriel Glass Gold guy. A lot of people prefer Zalto. I bought the Zalto just for this taste test. It was 90 bucks. I only bought one of the glasses though. <laughs> wine glass companies are so funny. I've approached so many of them about possible sponsorship on the channel, about samples, and they're so stingy. I, I just don't understand. I don't get it. I think the nose on the Zalto might be the best. Let's compare it to the Gabriel glass. Again, this is a really good wine. Minerals, a little bit of butterscotch, caramel, lemon. It's like kind of the mixture between Marceau. Maybe there's a little bit of Riesling-esque notes in there, along with Chablis. You kind of put that all together. So there's a little more perfume in the Zalto. It's a more intense. Let's compare to the Gabriel. Yeah, the nose in the Zalto is the best so far. Then Gabriel second. Went back and smelled all of them. I prefer the Zalto Gabriel glass nose, but the Rito 002, it smells really good too. The two bigger bowls, the Rovsia and the Rito Performance, the alcohol comes out a little bit. There's a little burn on the nose, not too much. Again, these are subtle differences. I want to see what the alcohol is. Rowan grapes usually are a little bit higher in alcohol. 12%, so it's not super high. Now the fun part, let's taste. First with this crappy glass here. It actually doesn't taste so bad in this cheaper glass. It tastes all right in the cheaper glass, but the wood kind of stays on the palate for a long time. Not the most enjoyable experience, it doesn't taste great. Let's go to the next one. Another cheap Amazon glass. I get like no flavor at all. Like that's something I just, like the cheaper crappy weird shaped glass is better than that glass, which is weird. Let's move on to the row of Sia. This is where we get a step up. The Rovsia glass, you can tell it's a high quality barrel fermented wine. High quality barrel fermented whites, you have this nice kind of like sandy texture on the palate. Although it's not as fruity as I'd like. Let's move on to the real here. Now here's the first glass where I got like everything. I like the aromas like I said in the Rito 002. On the palate, you get some lemony, slaty type flavors. You get the sandy texture from the barrel. This out of these first four was the best overall. Let's move on to the Pinot Noir Performance. Pinot Noir Performance is smelling better, but the alcohol still comes through a bit. On the palate, this comes out as the creamiest. This has the best mouthfeel, the best texture. Maybe it has something to do with the angle. It really feels really silky on the palate. That's really good. Let's, let, oh, I like that. That's so far, I didn't like the aromas. Let's go with the, the Zalto and the Gabriels where I like the aromas the best. Length is extremely good on the Gabriel Glass Gold. It feels a little more angular. Like it's, it doesn't feel as creamy in the Pinot Noir Performance Glass. I feel like there's little arrows, little razor blades going all over. Let's try with the Gabriel Glass Gold Edition. It already feels nicer here. Yeah. Same aromas. It's funny with the, maybe it's just because my state of mind, you're feeling better, you're feeling, it's more elegant in the hand. The Gabriel Glass Gold, it still has the angular you get with the Gabriel Glass Regular, the standard, but I like the length in these two. It doesn't feel as creamy in the Pinot Noir performance. Let's move on to the Zaltos here. Mm. 
Zalto. The Zalto, again, feels a little bit angular, but it also has an intense finish. Let's move on to these. Let's move on to the two Riedels again. Oh, the length. I got to tell you, overall, mouthfeel feels better than the Pinot Noir Performance Glass. I like the length and the two Gabriels, the Zalto, and I like the aromas. They were the best. The overall balance with mouthfeel and aromas, I think the Riedel 002, maybe overall, especially value for money, maybe the best glass here. When, when you're talking about luxury, what feels better in the hand. I feel like balance in the hand, the Gabriel Glass Gold is better. Since this is a little bit taller, it feels like the center of gravity is off and it's just more wobbly. I think in the super expensive set, out of the super expensive set here, I'd prefer the Gabriel Glass Gold is the most expensive. But overall value, I think the Rito 002 wins for the whole package, plus when you're factoring price. Funny also that this crappy odd shape glass did kind of okay. <laughs> Let's move on to red wine. Since a lot of the premium companies are Austrian, we're going to taste of an Austrian red wine. Riedel, Gabriel Glass, and Zalto are all Austrian companies. We have here the Paul Ox. This is the Ried Gulzer Altenberg Blau Frankish 2019 single vineyard wine. Comes in at 75 bucks. So we're talking about super serious wine. I love Austrian wines. I love the great Blau Frankish known as Lemberger in Germany, Kek Frankosch in Hungary, in all the Slavic countries goes by things like Frankinja Modra in Slovenia, Frankovka in Croatia, Serbia, also in Slovakia and the Czech Republic. You also find some cinemas in Croatia like in Istria where they call it Borgonia. I love Blau Frankish. The grape can act a real Pinot Noir earthy-esque if it's made a little bit lighter. It can sometimes resemble Sangiovese without the tannins and then made to a bigger style. Can be like a big Cabernet Franc. Let's see. This is 75 bucks. 14% alcohol. I expect it to be a big bigger more of a serious, ambitious wine. I prefer Blau Frankisch, Kick Frankosch to be made more in the lighter style. Austria kind of claims the grape as its own, although the most plantings of the grape is in Hungary. However, there might be evidence to show that it's from where modern day Slovenia is. It's a Carpathian Basin variety. I mean, these countries all used to be part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. I'll give each of these glasses a little rinse. The Italians say they're like baptizing the glass, preparing the glass for the wine. A lot of times when we move from white to red, I just like to pour right over. However, I'm going to try to make this test as precise as possible. By the way, if you like this content, I've just launched my channel memberships. In the second tier, I'm going to do a monthly live tasting where we sit down. Hopefully, I'm going to start bringing in winemakers. Maybe we can taste some wines together. People that are passionate about wine, if you want to geek out, talk about wine, you can't always talk about it with your family and friends. We'll be able to talk about it there. I'm going to try to work on the technology to try to bring some of you on screen. I'm going to schedule that once a month. That's only available for those that sign up for the second tier of channel memberships. Thank you a lot. I love this grape. A lot of times with Blau Frankish, serious ones, I think of black cherry, black raspberry, spice, a little bit of incense. Really, it can make really fruity, easy drinking wines or super serious wines. It's a fantastic variety. Doesn't really gain steam internationally like Cabernet or Merlot. Okay, it actually smells pretty darn good in this basic glass. I get a lot of spite, like a lot of black pepper, black cherry, black raspberry, blackberry. Just a hint of wood, but really done well. It's super, it smells really good out of that first glass. Let's move on to the basic Amazon glass. Red raspberry and a little bit oak, and it doesn't smell as pretty as in this really cheap, crappy glass. Let's move on to the Rovsia. This is the best so far, the best. <sighs> Black cherry, blackberry, black raspberry. I get leather even. A hint of mocha. It smells like super serious wine. Oh, that's gorgeous. Tell him, man, Blau Frankish, you don't know, you gotta get into it. Let's move on to the Rito 002. Smells exactly the same as the Rovsia, except I think the Rovsia has a little bit more oomph, a little more intensity. Literally the same flavors. It smells exactly the same in these two glasses. I think I'd give Rovsia a little leg up because it just smells more intense. Let's move on to the expensive glasses, the Pinot Noir Performance. 
awesome too. <laughs> The black fruits, the leather, everything I took, the mocha, like the touch of wood comes out a little bit more in the Pinot Noir performance glass. Let me smell, I mean, I think I might prefer the cheaper Rovsia big bold glass smell. Actually, when I smell it again, they're pretty close. You have to pay a lot of attention. It just smells a little bit deeper, a little bit denser in the Pinot Noir performance. Let's move on to the Gabriel glass. Gabriel glass, the fruit comes out more. I don't get as much of the leather notes as I did in the Pinot Noir performance glass. Yeah, it just smells a little more savory in the Pinot Noir performance. Let's move on to the Gabriel glass gold. Exactly the same. I would expect it to smell the same because they're the same. The, the bowl shape is the same as the Gabriel standard in the gold edition. The fruit comes out more. It smells the most complex so far of the Pinot Noir performance. Let's move on to the Zalto. Zalto is so funny, it smells more savory, like those leather, some earthy mocha notes, and the Gabriel glasses smell more fruity. The most complete so far, the Pinot Noir Performance and the Rovsia. Yeah, it smells really good. Okay, let's taste here. It's spicy, I like this wine a lot. It tastes a little fruity. The wood tannins come out in this basic glass. Let's go on to the cheap Amazon glass here. Once again, I don't like the nose at all. On the palate, it definitely feels creamy. The fruit doesn't pop. When you have an expensive, complex wine like this, I'm usually not so picky about judging people on their wine glass choice, but I feel it, like it's all wood tannin. The fruit kind of falls apart in this glass. And when you have a great wine, you want to drink just out of a better glass. That I mean, that even this glass was okay, but I just go for something a little bit nicer. Let's move on to the Rovsia. Oh, it smells great. I told you, like it smells very similar to Pinot. Like the aromas, I think overall were best in the Rovsia and the Pinot Noir performance glass. Mm. Here, you get everything. You get the fruit, the savory notes. There are some tannins but things come together really nice. That just tastes really good. Got long finish, really well done. Let's move on to the Rito 002. The fruit pops out a little bit more. It's so funny how wine can taste so different. The same wine can taste so different based on the glass. I've even seen winemakers play tricks on people where they bring out a wine, a tank sample, and then they bring out the same wine again to one person to see if they could tell the difference. But that's why wine is so interesting. It's always changing. A little more fruity in this glass. Performs really well. The rose, I'm both in these inexpensive glasses. Let's move on to the Pinot Noir Performance. In the Pinot Noir Performance glass, the wine feels a little bit lighter. And these two, especially the Rito 002, feels more full body, like heavy cream-esque. Here it feels more like maybe whole milk or, or even 2%. I actually think I like, if, if I could put everything, I think I might the, like the flavor on the palate of the Rito 002. Let's move on to the two Gabriels. Mm. No question here. Mouthfeel in the Gabriel glass is the best so far. It's fruity, it's intense, you feel all those nuances, it's complexity, it's a deep wine. You get all the fruit flavors, you get those savory notes I was talking about. It's dense, it feels pretty full. Let's move on to the Gabriel Glass Gold. Might even have a longer finish on the Gabriel Glass Gold, similar, but again, or it might be because I'm tasting wine back to back to back and the flavors, the tannins start to build. The length here in the Gabriel Glass Gold is what's really good. Let's move on to the Zalto. Ironically, the Zalto, I feel like you just get more wood tannins on the back end. I don't like for an expensive glass. Let's go between the, the, the three that I like the most here. Mmm. It's so different. Just I'm into tech a lot. Like one one camera, one microphone doesn't give you everything you want. Everyone has its pros and cons. For red wine, I prefer the flavor 
a lot more on the palette of the two Gabriel glasses. I feel like you get the most complexity. I also like the flavors out of the Rito 002 a lot. I think the overall experience, when you're talking about price quality, aromas, and flavors, I actually prefer this cheap Rovsia glass the most out of the so. <sighs> And that glass is only nine bucks, so it's a win for you. Again, this is why wine is so difficult and trying to describe wine to some person is so difficult. Everyone has their own flavor. Wine is so complex, it's always changing. Not one glass was the clear winner for both the white and the red wines. I guess when I factored in price, I picked the Rito 002 because I like the aromas, flavors, and the price. For the red wines, I like the Rovsia for $9.99. I mean, that's the cheapest you can get. It can go up to 19 bucks for everything put together. But obviously, what made me feel the best, more luxurious, holding in the hand, Pinot Noir Performance, the Gabriel Glass Gold, and the Zalto. And every different type of wine will behave different in different glasses. So. There's no clear-cut winner, but I think the Rito 002 and the Rovsias just, just gave you more bang for your buck. So tell me, have you ever done a taste test like this before? Are there any wine glasses that you prefer? Are there things that you think I got wrong? Let me know in the comments below.